Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Root Beer here, and I thought I'd share with you a problem that uh, I quite like, that I find interesting, and that I was first introduced to uh, about halfway through my high school career, and that is the, the, the Circles of Apollonius problem. Now, if you've heard of that, fantastic. If you haven't, I'll just bring you up to speed. It's an interesting little problem uh, that comes from uh, sort of classical Greek geometry. So we're, you know, once again, we're talking things straight edge and compass style constructions. Uh, none of this, this fancy analytic geometry or coordinate systems or anything like that. But the problem is, uh, it's, it's not just one problem, it's, it's several problems as I have it here. But uh, suppose we're given sort of three objects lying in the plane, geometric objects is what I mean. And uh, these can be points, lines, or circles, or, or some combination, okay? So you could have, you know, two points and a circle is handed to you. Or a line, a point, and uh, a circle is, is what's given. So th those, those are the conditions that you have. Those are the things you're given. And they're lying in your standard Euclidean plane, uh, the one we're familiar with. And your task is to construct, and depending on what the problem is asking for, you'll either be constructing one, some, or all possible circles that pass through the points, assuming you're given any points, and are tangent to the circle or the circles and the lines that you are given. Okay, that's the challenge. Now, depending on what you're handed, what objects you're handed, lines or circles or points. Uh, you will have different constructions that you're going to make, and you're going to have different numbers of circles that you can find that pass through the points and are tangent to the lines and tangent to the circles. So I've summarized the results in uh, uh, this little chart here, and also summarized the different possible cases. With points, lines, and circles as our objects, and, and three of them uh, are what we need, there's ten different cases we can work with. Okay? So, uh, you know, you can have sort of three points sitting in a plane, and assuming that they're in a nice general configuration, there, there are some weird exceptional cases. Like, if all three points lie in a line, you're not going to be able to get a circle that passes through them. But assuming that they're not, assuming you just have, you know, point, 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 and they just happen to be out there, you can get a, one circle, at most, that passes through those three points. And this is not unfamiliar to us. Uh, if you connect those points up, you get a triangle. And the circle that you have constructed is just the circumcircle. And I've shown you guys how to do that by straight edging compass before. So, hey, we are, we've already solved uh, the point, 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 three points, or uh, as it's often abbreviated, PPP case of the Apollonius problem. Okay, but there are others. And each of them come with their own, uh, their own number of solutions. So you could be given, you know, two points and one line. We tend to abbreviate that by PPL. Some sources will uh, cite the more complex objects first, so it you know, they might write it as LPP. I prefer my points first, then my lines, then my circles. That's how I was originally taught this problem. But if we're given two points and one line, in general, we can find two circles, two different circles that are tangent to this line and uh, pass through the given points. You know, and then there's one point and two lines, and that also has two, circular, uh, two circles in general for their solutions. And then we get a very interesting thing, three different lines. This is the LLL case, if you're following along with the abbreviations, and this is another well-known uh, problem. Three lines, just if you have random lines, you don't know anything about them, you know, they're not specially ordered, they're not all parallel to each other, things like that. In general, they're going to form a triangle, and the circles that give us our solutions, uh, one of them is the in-circle. And the other three are what are called X circles. And when we get to that video, I'll, I'll show you and talk a bit more about the X circles. But one sits inside, and then there are three outside, each tangent um, uh, to, to the three lines. Because remember, it's not just a triangle. It's not just line segments. It's, it's full straight lines here. So in general, we get four circles there. And, you know, we could keep going down the list. I mean, I really like uh, point line circle. I think that's quite an interesting case four different answers there. Okay? And depending on uh, whether or not you encounter the problems of Apollonius out in the wild, you might just be looking for one circle, in which case you're going to say my videos are overkill. Because when we get to the line circle circle case, I will be constructing eight circles, and it's going to take us some time. But sometimes you want some specific ones, some nice arrangement, or what I'm going to be doing is all circles. 
And we can, we're, we're going to work our way down the list, and then we, we arrive at the very end. So we've talked about point, point, point. We've talked about LLL. Uh, the, the other one that has all three objects the same are three circles, so CCC. And when I say three objects the same, I don't mean that the circles are the same size or that they're all uh, related in some way, just that they're all circles. And CCC is sort of the most interesting of the cases. It is the, the most challenging one. It's got a large number of solutions, eight solutions in general. Okay, and actually, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. You know, we're given three circles right here, these, these nice little pink circles. Um, when all is said and done, our construction will finally give us a little something that looks like this. And there's a lot to unpack here. But just for a moment, let's... Uh, Let's make one of these black so it stands out a bit more and also beef up the line thickness so it's a little easier to see on more low resolution screens. But if we take a look, our black circle lies tangent to each of these three circles. Okay, But then we've got uh, sort of this, this one in here, this, this inside triangle, not triangle, circle. And it also lies tangent to all three. And each of these red circles is a solution to the, the CCC Apollonius problem. So uh, you, if we can count them up, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight down here. Okay, We do have eight, uh, eight solutions there. And so... As I say, the, the CCC case it really is the, the, the hardest one to do. And in some sense, it's, it, it sort of encompasses all of the other ones. And I'll explain that in a moment. But that's why it's often called the problem of Apollonius. Okay? So I say these, uh, these, this, this type of question, we're constructing circles of Apollonius. And you know, given you know, PPP, or PPC, um, you might say that's a problem of Apollonius. But really... The one that everyone was interested back then, uh, uh, interested in back then, is the circle, 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 the big one, the the eight solution, circle, circle, circle case, and that's why it's sometimes called the problem of Apollonius. Now I said some of the, well, all of the other ones are sort of special cases uh, of circle, 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 and what I mean by that is, uh, in a very interesting way, you can view points and lines as just very special circles. Okay. So uh, points can, in, in some sense, be, be considered as circles that just have zero radius. Okay, they are their own center, and you don't go anywhere. It just it has zero radius. And, uh, you know, that's not particularly hard for people to swallow. You know, you, you get a circle, and you just make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually, you're just going to get a point. The one that's a little harder for people to, to sort of see is lines can be considered as circles as well. Just circles a sort of infinite radius, whose center is not somewhere on the plane, but it's just somewhere out at infinity. Okay, that's that's a one way to view it. And if we go back to our GeoGebra environment, we'll just shuffle on over for a second. We'll talk about this. You know, if I have a circle here and I just sort of shrink the radius, yeah, I get to a point. Then if I blow the circle up a lot, and uh, I'm not going to be able to blow it up enough, but let's zoom in. The curvature sort of seems to go away, and this is becoming more and more like a line. And this is just me zooming in. You know, I, I zoom out, and I'll get back. You know, the curvature comes back. But as I zoom in, my circle here began to look like a line. Okay, So if we imagine an infinite radius, we might imagine that, yeah, there's some sort of connection between... Uh, lines and circles there. And so if we, uh, if you've seen sort of stereographic projection, which is, you know, not something everyone's seen, uh, you will know that there's a nice connection between uh, points on a sphere, well, almost all points on a sphere, and the points in a plane. And when you reverse sort of stereographic projection, you get lines get mapped to the sphere and they become circles there. So uh, very interesting things. But under this sort of assumption, these these other nine possibilities, other than circle, 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 are what are sometimes called limiting cases. You know, the limit as the radius gets smaller, the limit as the radius gets bigger. But, uh, you know, point line circle is just 
you're given three circles. One of them has zero radius, one of them has infinite radius, and one of them just has some finite radius. Line, line, circle. Well, that's uh, just the special case where you have two, three circles, but you know something extra about the problem, that two of the circles have infinite radius. Okay? So in that sense, the other nine are called limiting cases of the problem of Apollonius, or special cases. Okay. Now, I've been saying Apollonius a lot, but uh, Apollonius uh, was the name of a nice Greek geometer. Uh, he worked a lot with uh, things like conics and so forth. And it, uh, his name is he's Apollonius of Perga, if you want to look him up. And he's the one who originally devised this problem. He's the one who originally solved it. Unfortunately, we don't have his original work. We know it exists because other Greek mathematicians uh, around the same time mention, oh, this amazing work by, by Apollonius of Perga. Uh, you know, he, he poses this problem, he solves it, it's great, you should go look it up, that sort of thing. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have any surviving copies of, and I do apologize for my Greek pronunciation, but I believe it's Epiphy. I, I tried to look up how to exactly to pronounce it, but that's the name of, of the book. And, and actually, Apollonius has a lot of books that we know he wrote that are lost, and Epiphy is just one of them. Now, if you're not familiar with ep with your Greek or, or you know pronunciation like I am, Epiphy just means tangencies, and you can see why he would name his book that. This entire problem is just about getting tangencies or tangent circles that are tangent to, to other circles, other objects. You know, given some objects, find the circles that are tangent to those objects. Okay? So he posed this problem, he ended up solving it uh, in this book, and, and we definitely know it did exist, we just don't have any copies of it. Now, because no copies happen to just be sitting around and, and happen to survive, uh, mathematicians subsequently said, well, we know the problem, we know there is a solution, let's get cracking on it. And if you just give a, a cursory glance to the Wikipedia page on the problem of Apollonius, uh, you will find a lot of different techniques are used to solve, and sometimes it's just the circle, circle, circle case, but sometimes it's a lot of the other cases. Um, a lot of different techniques uh, with the advent of um, uh, sort of coordinate geometry, you can write down the equations for all the, the circles and, and try and solve tangencies that way. And um, I know there's a very famous method involving the use of a hyperbola to solve uh, the, the, the circle, circle, circle case at least. But uh, what I'm going to be doing in this video series is we're going to go back, we're going to do it old school, and we're going to show that it can be done just using straight edge and compass. Now, if you watched my straight edge and compass series, you know that some of those constructions take a little while and that GeoGebra already has a tool for them. For example, uh, I did, I believe, show you guys how to uh, construct tangencies, tangent lines, from a point to a circle using just straight edge and compass techniques. But since we know we can do that, we'll shorten up our proofs by just taking it for granted that this, this particular GeoGebra tool can be done for free. So we're going to shorten it like that. So if you thought my uh, 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 compass and straight edge videos were taking too long, well, these will hopefully make it a little shorter. But we will be doing the whole thing just sort of with only the stuff that you could do with straight edge and compass just to show it can be done. Because I thought this was pretty nifty when I was uh, first shown this problem. I was at a, a math camp and one of the things that they, they taught us how to do was problems of Apollonius. So, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I wanted to share that with you. It's not going to take too long. As you see, there's only 10 cases um, to work with. So just 10 videos. And if you want to skip to any of them, I'm going to be using my abbreviation style to to uh, denote them. So if you're really looking forward to LLC, just wait around for that video. If you want to jump right to CCC and see how it all gets done, by all means. But I will warn you, uh, for um, the circle, circle, circle case, we're going to be using a method called radius reduction, and uh, it's going to reduce the problem to point circle circle. So you might want to be up on, on what happens with that video, because I'm, I'm not really going to re-explain that technique. But as I say, uh, I'm very excited to bring these to you, and uh, I do hope you, you take a look at really all of them, because I think they're all interesting. Even the point, point, point case, it's nice to have a brief refresher as to how do we get the, the circumcircle. But uh, yeah. So really excited to bring this to you, and uh, I look forward to meeting you guys in the next videos as we go through them together. So thank you for joining me, and thank you for uh, watching 
this video and, and the whole series, really. So long for now.